Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory and in this video we are going to understand why we need to impedance match a transistor. And we are going to see how it works using this meat chart. Take your coffee and come with me. First guys, let's recap why we need to impedance match in the general case. First thing we need to understand is the available power of a power source. When you have a power source with a finite output impedance, any real power source will have a finite impedance. For RF systems, we force the usage of fifth ohm. For any power source, we have the maximum available power. And the maximum available power is the maximum power power source can deliver to a load. This maximum available power will be only delivered to the load if the power source and the load are matched. The impedance of the load needs to be exactly equal to the impedance of the power source. And remember, we can't change the output impedance of the power source. So you can't think about changing this resistor here. This this is not a component, this is not a resistor, this is the output impedance of the power source. In this case here we have a 0 dBm power source, a 1 milliwatt power source and it is easy to see that 1 milliwatt will be only delivered to a load if the load has the same impedance as the power source. To have 1 milliwatt being delivered to a fifth ohm load we need 224 volts RMS over fifth ohm. The internal voltage source of the power source model needs to generate 448 millivolts because half of this voltage will appear over the internal impedance of the source. If we try to change the load, we're gonna see that any load we put here will receive less power. It's very easy to see that if we place a 30 ohm resistor here, the voltage over the resistor will be lower because a higher voltage will appear over the internal resistance of the power source and less power will be delivered. The power source still is a 0 dBm power source because the available power is 0 0 dBm, but we can only extract 0 dBm if we use if we use a load with a matched impedance. But when we are using transistors, why we need to impedance match the base of the transistor? We need to match the base of the transistor because the base of the transistor has a real impedance. When we draw the transistor, we don't see any impedance, any resistance, any capacitor, any inductance. But the signal looking through the base of the transistor transistor sees a real impedance. The base of the transistor presents itself to the signal as a real impedance. And to have maximum excitation of the transistor, we need to have here on the base of the transistor, we need to excite the base emitter junction with the maximum voltage. And of course guys, the maximum voltage here over a fixed impedance will happen when we are delivering the maximum power. Maximum voltage over the impedance happens, of course, at the exact time we have the maximum power, because power is voltage squared over the impedance. So to have maximum excitation voltage over the base emitter junction, we need to have maximum power delivered to the base emitter junction. And as we can't change the base emitter junction and we can't change the power source, we need to place something here in between the two parts to match the impedance, to transform the impedance of the source, here 50 ohms, to the impedance of the base emitter. Because if we transform the voltage and current relation over this interface, we can deliver the maximum power to the base emitter junction and if we have the maximum power being delivered here, we have the maximum voltage exciting the transistor. This is why we need to impedance match the base of a transistor. I draw the fifth ohm here on the collector of the transistor because this is the other part of the transistor. And by definition, when we are measuring the reflection parameter here on the base, we are measuring S11. And S11 is the reflection parameter when the other port is matched to fifth ohm. And always remember guys, power can be represented 
presented as many combinations, many combinations of voltage and current ratios. So the impedance matching network we are going to place here in between the two parts, we will need to change this voltage and current profile. So the available power of the source is delivered as a different voltage and current that exactly excites the impedance of the transistor with maximum power. Well guys, we used some technique to measure the base impedance. We're gonna talk about this in next videos, but now we measure the base impedance and we know that the behavior of the base impedance is represented as a resistance to ground, 36 ohm, with a capacitive behavior. And we model this capacitive behavior as a 6 picofarad capacitor. And this behavior we measure near or at the frequency we're gonna use the transistor. Let's say it is 100 megahertz. At 100 megahertz, the frequency we're gonna use the transistor, this capacitor will behave as a negative imaginary impedance. And this is the impedance or reactance of this 6 picofarad capacitor at 100 megahertz. But this is behavior modeling. We need to know the impedance here. A mathematical impedance, Z, is a resistive part plus a reactive part. It is a series combination. And here we have two parts in parallel. So to discover the impedance looking at the transistor, we need to calculate the parallel of these two impedance here. 36 parallel with negative 266J. And the parallel combination of 36 with 266 is an impedance, now we have a truly impedance, 35 minus 4.8J. This is an impedance because it is a series combination. This is the base of the transistor, so this impedance here, this series combination, is the mathematical impedance of the base of the transistor. Well guys, do you agree with me that if we look at any impedance, we could draw the impedance in a plot, in a Cartesian plot, where we have resistance on this axis and reactance on this axis. This impedance here would be at 35, let's say it is here, 35, and negative 4.8 here, negative 4.8. This point here represents the impedance looking at the transistor. This Cartesian representation here is the first step to create a Smith chart. A Smith chart is a geometrical tool we use to create RF circuits, to create filters and to create impedance matching networks. And it starts with a Cartesian impedance map where we round the reactive part over the resistive part, creating a circle. The resistive axis continues to be straight here in the middle of the Smith chart and the reactive axis is rounded around the resistive axis. This creates a very powerful geometrical tool we can use to solve RF and impedance matching problem. As we are working on a 5th ohm system with a 5th ohm power source, we center 5th ohm in the middle of the Smith chart. So a pure resistive 5th ohm impedance is exactly in the center of the Smith chart, exactly here. And now we can draw the point that defines this impedance here. 35.3 real plus negative 4.8 imaginary. Here we have 5th ohm, here we have 25 ohm, so 35 is around the middle here. This is the reactive curve with constant negative 4 imaginary impedance. So 35 plus negative 48 imaginary is around this position here. Now we need to use components to create a filter, a impedance match network that connects these two points here, transforming the impedance. We need to create a path here on the plot that gets from this point here, this impedance here, and goes to this point here, fifth ohm, this impedance here. Of course, the path inside the Smith chart will not be straight, because here on the Smith chart we have curved trajectories of constant resistance and constant reactance. 
This circle here is a constant conductance circle. If we could transform this impedance using a path landing it over the constant conductance circle, we could create a second path traveling over this circle here to arrive at 50 ohm. So first we need to create a trajectory from here to here and a secondary trajectory from here to here. To move from here to here, we need to use a series capacitor. Why we need to use a series capacitor? Because a series capacitor capacitor will add reactance and will not change the resistance. So adding a series capacitor will move the impedance over a circle of constant resistance. And the circles in this direction here are the circles of constant resistance. So using a series capacitor to connect the power source to the transistor, we moved the impedance of the transistor in a circular constant resistance path, bringing the impedance exactly over the constant conductance path, this path here. The length of this trajectory here defines the series reactance needed, defines this value here. Now to move the impedance over the constant conductance circle, we need to add a parallel reactive part because a parallel reactive part will not change the conductance. A parallel admittance is equal to a conductance plus a susceptance. If we add a parallel reactive element, we are changing the susceptance, the parallel susceptance, and we are not changing the conductance. So the impedance here will move over the constant conductance circle. And we're gonna create this trajectory using a parallel inductance. This parallel inductance will change the susceptance and not change the conductance, moving the impedance exactly over 5th ohm. Adding a series capacitor brings the impedance exactly over the constant conductance circle and adding a parallel inductor moves the impedance exactly over the 5th ohm point. This really means that now we change the profile of voltage and current, the voltage and current relation on this port now will be different than on this port. And the impedance matching network is this middle box here that transforms this relation, allowing the power source to deliver its maximum power, its maximum available power, 0 dBm, over the impedance of the transistor base. Now the power flow into the transistor base is maximum, generating the maximum excitation voltage over the base emitter junction. And of course guys, at the maximum excitation voltage over the base emitter junction, we have the maximum power in the other port of the transistor, because the transistor is being excited at its maximum. Now that you know the impedances of the parts, you can use the frequency of operation to calculate the components needed. For this example, we would need an 82 picofarad capacitor and an 120 nano inductor. And this is impedance matching for a transistor. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and remember that you can support the channel becoming a patron. Link on the description. I see you in the next video of our electronics.